So if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about self-improvement. And uh, let me be the first to say congratulations on breaking the status quo of sitting down and spending your entire days and wasting your time watching and uh, yeah. But in all seriousness, um, I'm going to be real, man. I think that any man or woman, young man or woman, old man or woman, because it's never too late to start self-improvement. But when I see the young people do it, it, it brings a, a tenderness to my heart that society is not completely f So as someone who's been on the self-improvement journey for nearly five years, because it's a never-ending grind, I have a few advice rules from my personal experience that I would like to share that can add to your self-improvement journey. Number one is that you start somewhere. It, it doesn't matter where. I mean, as long as you're not trying to... Um, if like, let's say you want to become a lawyer, you're not trying to take on the world court um, right away. You, you understand what I'm saying. A bit of a hyperbole. But as long as you start within a reasonable space, I think the number one thing is that you start somewhere and grasp a concept. Now, when I was learning about computers and hacking, I learned coding and I just learned syntax and I didn't know what the code was used for at all until I actually learned about how programs work and files and then command lines and um, all these things that go into networking and cybersecurity, etc. But I started off learning code and like learning syntax. And it's like the number one basics that you could learn on what you're doing. And it really opened up my brain to new ideas. It was a very transformative thing for me. Rule number two about self-improvement you don't have to buy any expensive online courses to improve. I think self-improvement or having any sort of skill set or goal, right, doesn't need to be put into a $50 a month kit for everyone to buy or some sort of secret club that you have to gain access to because there's a lot of different skills and trades you could use to be a benefit to society, make money, provide for your family. And along with self-improvement and all the people eager to learn, there comes a few predatory people. I'm not really going to go over the list, but I'm pretty sure you might know who I'm talking about, who sell you on this stuff. And then once you get in to their stuff, you realize that um, you could have found this for free somewhere else. There's always like this, this glamour around um, self-improvement, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But a lot of people know marketing and how it works and how to get people to click on links and get people to do things uh, and just spend money that they don't have to. And I'm just here to tell you, yeah, sometimes you're going to be spending money for self-improvement, but save it for the actual courses on how to learn skills from some really trusted sources. And I'm not just, I'm not one of those guys that says, oh, you have to go to college to learn. No, you, that's the biggest lie ever. You can learn outside and inside any sort of institution you want, but you just got to watch for the wrong people trying to prey on your willingness to be better because they're making some really fast money um, putting marketing in ribbons around something that doesn't need marketing and ribbons around it. Uh, rule number three, enjoy the process. Now, when I say enjoy the process, you have to. Like, now let's talk about fitness. Now we all, if you've been on the self-improvement thing, we all have a fitness journey. If you're not doing something else, fitness is part of it. That's usually where everyone starts. What better way to self-improve than making yourself look good on the outside? But let's say you start off doing three push-ups and you want to do 20 in a row. It's not going to happen overnight that you're going to go from three to 20 in a row, but you have to enjoy the process to get to the destination. That's just the number one thing that I could always say because if you are miserable until you get to 20 push-ups, you have to be happy when you get to four to get to five. And it doesn't matter if you're not at 20 yet, but enjoying that process actually helps you achieve your goals more realistically. Rule number four, and I've seen this because one of the things I've done is gotten my personal uh, training and uh, strength and conditioning certifications. And with all of that, I've seen some people who I've had the chance to work with, not, not as clients, but also outside of clientele, right? 
um, you see on their Instagram stories, and I'm just talking about friends all together, but some of them, you know, use their self-improvement journey as a way to have a story on their social media. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, the journey and seeing it documented in some way is a really good way, especially if you have an outside camera to realistically capture what it is you are doing. It could be a great measurement tool. And if you want to gain a following online and inspire others, I highly recommend you do that. But when I see someone who's claiming to superly be into fitness and then on Saturday and Friday nights, I see them eating tons of carne asada fries and ice cream and party foods and drinking loads of booze that has a lot of empty calories in it. Three months later, I've lost nearly 20 pounds. And this person's still where they started out. Now, that's going to show over time that you don't have the discipline. So consistency and discipline is super important when it comes to self-improvement. And when you cheat yourself or you are lying to yourself or not being authentic with yourself, it is going to show hands down. Now, the number, well, fifth rule, right? But the most important one, and this is one that I myself had to learn when it was the self-improvement journey. Because when I was doing judo, my friend slash instructor said, I notice in life you have a lot to learn. You're doing all these trades. You're reading all these books. You are learning to work with computers. You are learning how to work with music. You are learning all these different things, right? You always want to have a thing to learn. That is a lifelong commitment, but you're trying to cram it into a year. So he comes up to me and he says, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's always going to be a lifelong thing. So honestly, he his best advice to me that I'm going to hand down now Take breaks when necessary. Burnout is real, especially for self-improvement people. And I think that it's very important that people who want to improve and be a better society don't lose their luster to burnout. And then we have less people wanting to self-improve in the longevity realm. Because let's say I check a lot off my life checklist and then I take a night off to go do some things I love and then I come back tomorrow. Guess what? Things are great. Things, my batteries are recharged. I'm ready to put in more work. My braid's more active. It's got more cracks in it. You know what I'm talking about. And that was some of the best advice from someone that I've ever taken. Take breaks. Take designated breaks. And don't burn out, number one. But well, Actually, number five. But like I said, these are just my personal rules to self-improvement. If you have any more to the list that you would like to add, please do in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Uh, Be sure to like, subscribe, again, leave a comment. But I wish everybody luck on their self-improvement journey. And don't stop the grind. Stay productive. Stay a good society. And I will uh, see you on the next one.